From bad hygiene to impractical shoes, there are plenty of factors out there that can cause our feet a ton of issues. But for about one in 20 of us, one of the most serious factors is diabetes. Diabetes affects your blood flow and your nerve function. So unfortunately, people will injure their foot not necessarily be aware of it because their nerves aren't working. And that means that they don't even limp on that foot and offload that injury. And so little holes in the skin can become bigger holes in the skin and then fester. On the other side, they also have trouble with their blood flow. So their healing rate is far less than what it can, what it can be for people without diabetes. So if you put the two together, an unfortunate side effect is that you end up with an ulceration, very slow in healing and very, very likely to get infected. With rates of diabetes in Australia rapidly increasing, the number of amputations performed on ulcerated feet has risen by 30% in just 10 years. But podiatrist and uni lecturer, Dr. Helen Banwell, says most amputations could be avoided with best practice treatment. Podiatrists really play a part in diabetic-related foot disease and foot ulcers because they can debride or pare away or cut away that non-viable dead skin and bring it back to normal tissue and allow it to heal better. So what we, what we thought was a few years ago, we sort of sat and thought, how can we improve our teaching on this? And 3D printing was sort of proposed as a potentially good idea. To help her students get more hands-on experience before treating real patients, Dr Bamwell spent four years working with researchers at the University of South Australia to develop realistic 3D foot models. So we've got two models of foot mould uh, that we've, we've ended up with. One is a more robust version printed out of PLA material. And we use the more robust one to teach the second year students who haven't ever used a scalpel before. Uh, whereas as they get more proficient and more experienced, we move on to our Ninja Flex models that actually move and mimic the foot far greater than what the plastic ones do. So about 2019, we finally got our models to the point where we were quite happy with them. And then we had to start on how do we create a foot ulcer? I didn't realise you could buy commercial grade body ooze, but you can. Um, and we, we put that uh, in the wound and then surround it with a standard icing mix, a frosting mix to mimic pus which is not particularly pleasant, but it does the job amazingly. And then the whole wound is covered in a flexible resin that mimics the skin. By working with lifelike replicas of ulcerated feet, Adelaide's next generation of podiatrists are spending hours fine-tuning skills that could prevent hundreds of amputations each year. And using long, sweeping strokes, there is a satisfaction to it, especially when it, there's that debriding and getting all of it off, making sure it's nice and clean. You really have to do it hands-on to really get a feel for just how well you're doing it and if you're doing it correctly and how quick you're able to do it as well. Good job. We've actually measured what, this, what these models have done to their anxiety and their confidence, and it's been really amazing. So having access to a foot model gives them up to about 40% more confidence in their ability to debride a foot ulcer and reduces their anxiety by about the same amount. It's not like in class, say, you know, this week we're learning about ulcers and we can just have someone with an ulcer come in for every single person we can all debride. Like, this is as real as it's going to get without it being a real patient. And I think it's really good that we, when we do see someone with an ulcer, we can think back to what we did here and apply it.